Welcome everybody to this Thoughtful Thursday with uh, Joseph Montgomery here at Raw Revelations. And thank you all for making it out this evening, joining us online, uh, being able to, uh, to do the uh, live broadcast as well as uh, uh, on the conference line here. Um, so we are here today to talk about how to get your home, your house, and then eventually your life a little cleaner. Not the fact of scrubbing you down and actually doing it that way, but the idea that most people kind of don't understand um, that their constant handling of their environment is a way that they can be ingesting toxicity, uh, especially just through their skin. We talk a lot about how healthy skin absorbs good nutrients. Things like magnesium, you can use it to take in iodine, um, even turmeric is a, something you can actually put through the skin. Um, your skin does a lot. Um, the wood floor cleaner that you a lot of times use, if you have wood floors, has a ton of fat-soluble nutrients in it. I could say nutrients, but really they're anti-nutrients that go in through your feet. They get connected to your socks. Your pets actually are touching them on a routine basis if you have something that's toxic and they're licking their paws and they're having it be absorbed through their feet. Um, so this is definitely something where a lot of people sort of go through the day um, not really thinking about what they're being exposed to and it's very critical to kind of round out um, a healthy lifestyle. When you're drinking clean water, eating organic, very clean, natural foods, and then underneath the sink is a whole barrage of chemicals, you're kind of missing the next point in the connection. Um, so tonight we're going to go through um, some of the amazing, easy, and simplistic ways, come on in, uh, of actually doing very healthy home cleansers, cleaners, and getting uh, detox products like this back into your lifestyle and seeing everything kind of clean up around you. So there is a f um, handout that will be available for you. Um, if Michael, Michael might have one of those back there. Um, so you can grab one and be able to follow. Um, so we will start with our typical uh, one-minute meditation and get into the rest of the details and everything from this evening once we, once we kind of go through here. So everybody here has been here at least once. So I think we got the game plan down. No, no. <laughs> um, so we'll do this nice uh, breathing exercise, seven seconds long inhalation in, eight seconds of long exhalation out twice, and then we'll breathe for ourselves uh, just naturally for 30 seconds before we begin the, the meat of the actual tonight's lecture. So join me. Uh, focus on your breath. Seven seconds of inhalation. Eight seconds of exhalation. Seven seconds of inhalation. Eight seconds of exhalation. Very nice. Okay. So while you're breathing, maybe you notice that there's some nice scents in the air today. Um, essential oils, truthfully, are a great foundation system of medicine that everybody has at least in some way probably been exposed to one time or the other. Um, it's unique with essential oils because a lot of what I do more often than not is actually talking about the safety and the precautionary sort of steps for a lot of people because so many people out there kind of talk about the um, blank MD pad prescription system for essential oils. Use them forever. They're natural. They're healthy. There's no questions about um, uh, what they can do. Just eat them, put them on your skin, have fun. Who cares? Um, so it's really unique because we want people to kind of understand that in this process of being very clean and healthy, um, there are precautions to take on yourself that we've lost because our great grandmothers and our grandmothers and the people who knew how to use very simplistic methods for cleaning, sanitation, all of this, um, 
are not passing that information down. Um, so one of the most uh, interesting places to kind of start um, for everybody here, uh, anybody gargled with salt water? Ever? Yeah. Been in the ocean, choked on a little bit, maybe kind of that's the only experience you might have. So you are doing one of the simplest cleansing practices that you could possibly do um, by just adding a little bit of salt to water. Um, you're using it as a way because most bacteria that like the human body don't like being in a very high salt environment. Um, so it's kind of wonderful when we use it for a cleansing technique uh, to get into the body and be able to actually see some overall benefits. Um, they make now salt uh, pools and spas um, that actually keep the water extremely clean without a lot of chemicals in the in the system um, because the salt water doesn't allow standard algaes and things of that nature to grow. Um, so it's unique because this is one of those where we are going to kind of step through and understand that that's as simple as it has to be. Um, you can eliminate the necessity for very high alcohol content and extreme um, chemical laden mouthwashes, rinses, and things of that nature. Um, so we really want people to, I guess, sort of see that this is very simplistic, easy for everybody to do, no scary sort of problems, um, and there is so much more to kind of go along with that as well. Um, so salt is a great base. Uh, it's a great material to kind of start understanding. The right types of salt uh, are unique because we've already talked about the use of getting this back into the skin and letting this be part of the process for healing a person is letting magnesium be topically applied. Um, inside the magnesium we have a little bit of lavender uh, in order to be very cooling, calming, and you know using the essential oil properties of that particular um, plant in order to let it be relaxing for the, for the person. Um, so with essential oils and using these cleansing techniques it's unique because we can find the best bet. Maybe you are actually a person who's trying to get rid of some of the toxic compounds, uh, but you still like that cleansing, clean scent of lemon. Well, you can use a lemon essential oil. Um, you can add in an actual very nice, you know, and make it as pine solly as you want it to be with a little bit of fir needle, a little bit of lemon, uh, melaleuca, and allow for it to actually have a scent or flavor to where you can say, oh, yeah, I cleaned and I can smell it. Um, that's the unique thing about walking into a new environment and saying, is this place clean or not? When you walk in and you smell that nice refreshing scent, then that's a great way of indicating, hey, this, this area has something taking care of it. Um, but it's a powerful sort of piece to understand that just the few particulates in the air that allow you to sniff and smell something when put onto the skin actually become a little bit of a different way of utilizing material. So. The one biggest cautionary piece to tonight's talk is that essential oils are extremely concentrated medicines, which means the first rule, no matter what out there, is dilution, dilution, dilution. So the use of essential oils neatly or without a carrier oil or in a liquid or in some other form or function is something that I would just let everybody know it's a process to get used to and comfortable with these materials to where you can kind of feel that you know what you're doing without stressing the body. Um, even though essential oils are extremely clean and pure, it's unique because they can still be allergenic. You don't know about your body yet how you'll respond to an extreme concentration of some of these plants. Um, and it is unique because we have to sort of go through the details of understanding that when you're taking a little bit of lemon essential oil, one drop, um, that concentration is the same as if you would actually take about 40, uh, 40 pounds of lemon peel and squish it into one spot. So when it comes to using even just lemon on the skin in order to do sun lightning and material, you can bleach your hair with lemon essential oil. Um, it will strip colors very, very effectively. The citric acid is extremely concentrated. Um, and that's where it's very unique in just a sort of understanding for people. Um, they'll use lotions and different sort of creams, not realizing that there's grapefruit or lemon or something, and they're allergic to citrus. 
Um, so they'll see a reaction and go, hey, I've got this natural cleaning product or this natural cosmetic product. I don't understand how I'm getting this reaction. It's because of the concentrations. Um, yes? Are all essential oils a good quality grade? No, not at all. So the biggest piece of this to understand is that because um, I knew this was going to be probably the first sort of equation, uh, first question that comes in. Here's the difference. <clears throat> the um, essential oil that I have here on my left-hand side is actually a tea tree, um, Melaleuca. Um, so this is just pressed um, tea tree oil that's come out of the leaves of the tea tree. Um, no one's put this through any level of testing. So this is not something that I would eat. It's not something that I would wipe on my skin. Um, what I use this for is air purification. So when it goes into a diffuser or into some sort of steam humidifier, it's fantastic because it really lights up the room and it allows for the actual scent of clean to be a part of the whole process. Um, so when you understand that that means that this, you can't tell in the smell of it. So if you want to pass that and just be very careful, you can get a scent of what's occurring here. It's extremely strong and potent. You might never really know that there's any difference about it. Then, and if I put it in the same looking labeled bottle, then you might actually go, yeah, there's no difference here. There's an extreme difference. Um, this is, again, a company that they're not going through the extra steps in processing versus when it comes to somebody who actually does the triple checking of the actual essential oils. Um, when it comes to purification and testing for essential oils, you want it to go through a three-style testing. That's gas chromatograph. Uh, chromatograph. Chromatograph, yep. Yes, Correct. Um, you want it to have it be a vaporization or volatile, um, uh, volatile testing. Uh, to where they'll they'll actually have a um, vaporizer go through and, and see if there's any off-gassing of any other solvents or any other compounds. Um, and then photoionization is the other third test. And that's one that actually does the strength or the integrity of the oil. So when it goes through the process, now it's unique because the actual testing system, those three are the way that you certify that there's actually the compounds that you're looking for inside the oil. So if you're, say, picking up um, um, like tea tree, that it actually has the what's called a, a eucalyptol. And eucalyptol is a very particular compound inside tea tree that actually is found in eucalyptus, spearmint, peppermint, a lot of other different plants. Um, but it's unique because it has to show and to be proved the gas chromatograph or chromatograph is the one that actually tells us what the compounds are that are inside there. So if they have a compound breakdown, that means they've at least gone through that first identification process. Um, the vaporization technique is the one that actually tells us if they used any heavy chemical solvents in the process of pulling the material, the medicine, out of the plants and doing the steam distillation or anything that they adulterated it at all, then the vaporization technique will show a positive hit as having other compounds in there besides the essential oil. The photoionization, again, is one of those that you can test the integrity. Um, so this is the process. We want all three tests. Most good companies will do two, grass chroma a gas chromatograph and vaporization test. Um, the photoionization test is somebody who does go through the, the last step of just making sure that the overall quality of the oil, so you know what it is, you know that it's actually not has it have anything that's, that's going to cause problems or damage, but the last part is that it's actually going to hold up and stay what it's supposed to be for a long time. So it's interesting. There's tons of opportunities out there. There's a very, very myriad of co uh, companies. Um, you know, the unique thing is, is we're not even here tonight to go on the idea of a company, but it is one of those where don't just trust a label. That's the biggest piece in this. Marketing will literally tear a company apart um, because a lot of times there is so much energy put into just getting a product on the shelves, in people's hands, bought as much as possible. And that's where, if you follow the history behind some of the essential oils company, you had adulterations occurring, and yet they just stopped testing. So they just didn't tell anybody. Um, 
it's it's definitely one of those that you've got to just go through that process for yourself. It's it's a big piece in this. Um, once you have confidence in a company, talk to the people who are on charge. Check their tests. You know, again, you can ask for them. It's really not that hard. Um, and it does help the whole process of just knowing that you're doing something that's very healthy for yourself. So it's unique because each of the essential oils actually contains certain plant compounds, and those plant compounds are what actually affect or work with the human body. Um, we have on the outside of all of our cells sensors that actually pick up on these individual little compounds. So in the presence of a certain plant, uh, and especially when it comes to a concentration level of essential oils, that your cells respond in a certain way. Um, so it's unique because we can actually see uh, essential oils like frankincense work as an actual, uh, what they call a desmophage. Very interesting kind of fun word. What it means is that you actually will stop trembling. Um, if you actually have a lot of hand tremors, eye tremors, muscle spasms, things of that, that so it's, it's causing a relaxation. There can be things that are more like hemorrhophages, which are actually fantastic for stopping bleeding, like helichrysum. Um, you can actually start looking at material that just works as a basic antidepressant. Um, so you can get things that are more elevating to mood. They're working on a psychological side, um, things like Melissa. And you get a lot of things that actually can create more overall um, energy to the metabolites. They can actually help you um, urinate better, use the restroom more frequently, balance skin pH, things of that nature. They all have their own process in what they're doing. Um, and it's unique because I would say for most people, start with about five essential oils and figure them out the best way you can, and then step from there. Um, never bite off more than you can chew. The starter pack might come at a great deal and it's 25 oils and you think, oh yeah, this is fantastic and you'll find that you'll use two and then you don't know anything about the rest of them and you kind of just are lost. Um, start with them and use them routinely. That's why we kind of went through a little bit of a selection this evening to kind of just the ones I think people would use on a routine basis, know a little bit about and therefore feel very comfortable with. The only one I didn't bring this evening that uh, I think everybody's kind of utilized is lavender. Um, and lavender is, again, very wonderful for the most part, but any boy underneath of six years old is something that actually can set them on an estrogenic um, issue. So be careful when it comes to pregnant mothers and their overexposure, especially to lavender. So it is one of those that it can be something that we don't want um, messing with hormones because it is a medicine, and especially in high concentrations. Um, yes? Seven minutes. No, there's no truth to it. Um, there can be an effectiveness concept um, towards the idea of maybe it's most effective seven minutes after um, you actually start utilizing it. But the idea is that if you have a diffuser that's not ultrasonic um, and it's using any kind of heating methods or anything of that nature, that would be the only reason why you wouldn't want a time duration for the exposure of the essential oils. So seven minutes, I mean, really, that's the idea that you could start it up, turn it off. It sounds like a really fancy machine that probably does that, so it would be a great marketing ploy to actually say, only seven minutes, and by the way, here's the machine that does only seven minutes. Great. Um, they promoted it like if you have that scent or aroma for a long period of time and you're kind of deceiving the person. Correct. Well, you're not sensing it because your senses have adjusted. So the unique thing is, yes, variety is wonderful, but your body goes through dramatic changes every time you smell something different. So do you really want to be on an emotional roller coaster incited by essential oils? Uh, not me. Um, again, this is unique because what we find in history, of course, always goes back to the idea that when the Black Plague was going through Northern Europe, they would just literally pile fir branches in the middle of the town square and set them on fire. Um, very simplistic way of doing essential oils. The smoke would be full with the actual pine tar, and that tar would go through the town in the areas where you'd be closest to these, these fires. Very few people were sick. 
um, they started to understand that there's something to this process. Um, it's unique too that we go through, um, you know, understanding that the materials in essential oils, um, although we may not have scientifically known what they were, what they did, we've gone through a very long testing process of understanding how they affect human bodies, uh, and there is still some variance. So seven minute rule, I don't know, uh, that doesn't sound, that sounds like a really good way of buying a lot of oil and a really expensive machine. Um, just because if you, now walking out of the room and then walking back in, you might smell it again and it'll be there, but that's what your nose does. If you didn't get accustomed to scents, you literally would probably drive yourself insane. Uh, because if the scent wasn't, if it was pervasive, your brain would just keep firing the same way every single time, no matter what, without turning off. And if you go into a restroom area and you notice that there was somebody there before you, um, that would drive you insane if you couldn't get rid of that smell. Uh, so <laughs> the idea is be happy that it's only a few seconds where you're like, hey, that's weird. And then I don't even notice it anymore. Okay, fine. Um, today we've got a little bit of, uh, Mike, what was that beginning blend that you did? Peppermint lavender. And I can still smell it. Yeah, it's, it's good. kind of does that nice thing. Um, again, it's one of those where diffusing, when it comes to essential oils, is the simplest form of medicine. You're getting a few molecules of the actual oil floating in the air, you know, as you're sucking the air in, and it's being sensed inside the olfactory system, and that's it. Just a few little bits, and the idea is it can, you know, do more mood balance. Um, I, you know, again, talk to a lot of people, and the idea of using oils as medicine, the first form of oils as medicine is actually tenting and putting just the diffused material into only your body. Smelling on top of a nice like uh, warmed pot of water to where you're getting all of that actual medicine, you're getting a volume of it that's large enough. Um, still not direct contact, um, it is inside the nose and inside the esophagus, but it's not using the oil in a way to where it's coming directly on top of you. Um, so it's unique because we're going through you know, this whole understanding for ourselves. Um, so, I'm one who actually loves, and I'm so happy that we figured this out, you know, literally almost what uh, we're now going on, 1,300 years ago, hydrogen peroxide. Fantastic cleanser. This is the reason why when you walk into a hospital, you don't smell anything. And when you realize that you're like, yeah, you're right, you walk directly into a hospital and you usually don't smell a thing. It's because they're cleaning with hydrogen peroxide. No scent but one of the fastest um, antimicrobial agents you can have in terms of hyperoxygenation. Um, again, cleansing with uh, hydrogen peroxide is a fantastic way of getting all surfaces uh, clean and free of any microbe. Um, the only thing that can sometimes withstand hydrogen peroxide is extreme, uh, extremophiles and the spores that come off of them. So if you by chance are playing around with a meteorite, there's a chance that when you dust a little bit of that material that it will survive and it will not be killed by hydrogen peroxide. It's one of the only few ways that it kind of works. Do um, of course. Wash. Of course. So the big thing is to understand when it comes to hydrogen peroxide is that the 3% brown bottle stuff should never go in your body. Never. Everybody does it. I know. We've kind of trusted the whole things. The original creation of the 3% hydrogen peroxide solution was actually meant for electronics cleaning, um, not for, in, it's mainly industrial use. The quality is something that actually, again, there's a lot of other compounds to stabilize the hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide, when it's actually done in just a, a very pure form, um, about a month or so, and it, and it starts to dissipate. It all, it all actually oxygenates through. All of the H2O2 turns back to H2O. And you don't have hydrogen peroxide anymore. So shouldn't, should it? shouldn't. Correct. Should it? Um, should everyone's it? probably going to do it because it's easy. 35% um, hydrogen peroxide is the actual standard household use peroxide um, that you can find at any pa spa or pool store typically um, as a shocking agent whenever you get an algae compound that you put inside a you know inside a body of water. Um, so 35% is fantastic because you can dilute it down uh, one ounce of 35% to 10 ounces of water will give you 3.5 molar solution. So keep that 
in the, so a 10 to 1 ratio gets you back to the same stuff that's in the brown bottle, hydrogen peroxide. Yes. Cut grease. Yes, um, because it breaks down organic compounds, but it is not as effective as saponils, which are what soap is made of, of breaking up oil compounds. So not bad, but probably not going to be the style that you would just spray inside your you know, oven and have all of the nastiness just drop down and be done with it, wipe it out really simple and easy. Um, it does help break a lot of things up, especially carbon compounds and things of that nature by oxygenating them. Mm. Problem with oil is um, one, it soaks into fibers. Two, um, the different oils when they bind to the fibers, you have to find a way of getting the fi you know the material out of the fiber. Um, silk's extremely hard with oil because there's such fine fibers that you really destroy the garment trying to clean. Um, Heating and really good soap, really heavy soap, is actually the stronger way, but it has to be done very quickly. The longer it sits in, the longer it's going to stay there. Um, hold on. Ultrasonic? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you're technically vibrating the, the oil off of the fiber. Yeah, that, that's nice. Where do you get this stuff? So, um, again, the best thing to do is to actually order it online. It comes with a caution. Um, you can't order it. Like, I can't technically ship it um, because it's technically a, an oxid, uh, oxidizing compound. It runs um, a uh, Schedule 8. Um, DOT uh, caution, so shipping it to other people is not a good idea. Um, plus, anytime you have pressurization and hydrogen peroxide, um, so when it goes into a plane and comes back down, it literally bursts. Um, so it's unique though because, again, it's just one of the strongest cleansers and one of the only reasons I think that since um, I had children that um, I got into a condition where we just don't get sick much at all. All of the norovirus, um, notovirus, rhinovirus, all of those compounds that stay on a surface, they just die. It's great. So when uh, they're online and they're trying to get this to me, they're going to have a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Oh, no! Clean up on aisle three. Luckily, we got hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> hey, Mike, let me, let me, uh, can we grab a towel? See? Oh, a little so bit. Sorry. <laughs> Are you going to tell us what the five is going to Oh, do you have like a, oh, good. Yeah. Are you going to recommend the five is going to blow up or we can start with? Um, you can. Any five you want, definitely. If you kind of already have an introduction to a few, then just, just know them. That's the difference. Um, don't take someone else's word for it. Don't just use them because they're simple or easy. Um, but, you know, the idea is I love starting off with lavender, peppermint, cinnamon, orange, uh, and then some kind of blend of either those or something unique that's a little bit more uh, laver peppermint, cinnamon. Orange or lemon, any of those are fantastic. Um, uh, you know, and it just depends on what you're using them for. That's the other thing and a good piece of this. Start with the problem and find the oil that works with that problem. And that way you can actually see the direct connection on what it kind of does and how it starts working for the body. Oh, no. Um, chloride kills your thyroid. Chloride destroys your kidneys. Chloride takes away all of your energy. Um, again, chloride compound, although nice, was originally meant to be used in industrial settings only. The fact that Clorox came up with a use it at home sort of uh, uh, version of bleach um, is is kind of is kind of sad because again, 
60 years ago, everybody knew bleach was something that you actually stayed this far away from at all times. <laughs> and you never, you would always wipe after bleach. You would never just put bleach on a surface and then walk away. You would actually have to clean twice, which is sometimes very annoying. And so people just leave it on and they go, eh, it'll be fine. Um, so that helps. Uh, and bleach is really meant in extreme situations. Thank you, Mike. Um, to be something to where you can actually use it as, I know there's an infectious agent in this particular area. You know, when you have white towels and the idea is, you know, somebody's been, then the idea is be, but do it with the bleach, then do another rinse cycle. And the nice thing is you don't have to rely on bleach when, because that's what people, they associate bleach with clean. But when you start using things like hydrogen peroxide, you go, wait a minute, more clean, less damage. So that's the beauty of the actual nature. Um, big caution with the, the, uh, the hydrogen peroxide is at 35%. Um, I, luckily, this is diluted. No. No. Extremely caustic. It actually will burn your skin. Um, so the 35% is something where you don't use it in full strength. Um, unless you'd like to be missing a couple layers of skin. Or burn a mole off, correct. So is 3% good for disinfecting surfaces? Three, any presence, really. 1% is, 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 is perfect. Um, when you're getting 35%, just remember that equation. One ounce of the liquid, that's a 35% hydrogen peroxide, 10 ounces of water. So let's say we get to 3%. Mm -hmm. How much how would you use that one? Well, it's already mixed. And everything else is in there, too. So that's where the big thing is to try to actually make it to where um, you're getting pure material and starting from there. Uh -huh. When I buy it in a grocery store, I'm getting 3%. Correct. Well, Correct. Yeah. What he's saying is another stuff in there. And yeah. So, like I say, that's where, again, this is um, a uh, 7 This is actually a 7%. So, I didn't take it all the way down to 3 But you can literally clean your hands with it, perfectly fine for full disinfection. Use it to clean dishes, use it to clean anything you eat off of. Uh, rinse your vegetables with it. Um, you don't want to get it on your actual clothing because it will still start staining. Um, but, you know, it's unique too. Lighten your hair. <laughs> oh, it will lighten your hair. You this has just a hair? very simple, what we call purify. It's a, a variation of essential it's oils. It's a very yeah. clean smell. Um, oil of Thieves, which I don't know if anybody knows about Oil of Thieves, but. Yeah. Come here, Phil. Come on. So, I like to actually, again, smell clean. So, Mike, I'm, I, I really apologize that you can't smell through the conference line, but it smells delicious. It smells extremely clean, very clinical. No, not that much. So, this is just one of my own household little blends. Um, so, it's actually a compound that's... that's uh, Mixing uh, cinnamon clove, two really good high-level antioxidants and, and uh, antimicrobial, antimifungals. Uh, lemon, um, you're doing uh, rosemary and a little bit of um, tea tree and melissa. And these are oils. These are oils that are put into the hydrogen peroxide. So, like so that way I can still here. clean with my material, okay, but... How many drops per... So... This thing is a 32-ounce sprayer. Um, I probably put 30 drops in there. Of each? No, of the, mixture. of the mixture. So I blend the mixture, and then I'll put that in there. But like I say, that's one of those where we're moving into the idea of utilizing essential oils uh, in the home uh, and finding nice ways of cleaning. Mike, always feel free just to speak up. And let me know if there's anything I'm saying or any clarifications or good questions. Before we go on, what kind of sauce do you use? Say that one more time. Correct. Um, so the company that uh, that I enjoy is called Essential Three. So he was asking about the actual uh, company that I utilize um, for the oils here. Again, one of the few that go through all three processes for purification, um, but no markup. <laughs> so it's just the thing that essentially always got to me. Uh, but essential3.com uh, is, and that three is spelled out, T-H-R-E-E, -E, um, in order to kind of see the, 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 the product line there. 
So back to you. Four. Correct. The cheapest you can find. But the idea is that means you can clean with Mortons. You can use it to kill weeds. You can keep your garden safe by you know keeping slugs off of everything with the salt. Um, it's a great way to keep your cat at bay if you don't like your cat. So oh, they hate being sprayed with salt water. No, I wouldn't use. I mean, again, I wouldn't give any more money at all to Mortons if I if I ever had my choice. Um, uh, but that's just one of those. It's just the idea of again any bulk salt, not the the high end sort of you know going to use it on your foods and salads and salmon and all of that wonderful stuff. But more of the idea of like just something that you have. And again, I think every so often, yeah, this is what TJ Maxx two bucks, you know, and okay. so salt's fun. It's a good cleanser. Nope, that's diluted. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Different. It's stronger. Ten times more concentrated. When it's diluted. Yes. You can make your own. That's what we're doing here. That's where we're going. One ounce of solution to ten ounce of liquid. Again, the important part of it. Pre-mixed. Correct. Brown bottle contains other, other compounds, compounds mm -hmm. that are not necessarily Correct. desirable. Correct. Correct. Because, again, when you're making your own, it's just water and peroxide. Fantastic. When you're actually buying the stuff that's in the brown bottle, there's stabilizers in there. There's chemical adulterants that actually create the overall ability. Otherwise, again, the peroxide would only be able to be on the shelves for a couple months, uh, and then they would actually expire. Um, and it's just, again, understanding the FDA, they just need to find places to shove as much industrial toxic compounds into anywhere they possibly can to get rid of them. So that's the process. And that doesn't have a shelf life? It does. It does. That's why you make it one bottle at a time. So I actually had to bring... But I'm talking about the big bottle. The big bottle at 35% does, but let's take it by, if you increase the concentration by 10, then the shelf life is that much longer. So, and you can buy peroxide all the way up to 55 gallon drums um, if that's the, if you're using that much of it. If you're a pool cleaner, a spa cleaner, and you start using peroxide, uh, one, warn your client. Two, it will actually really improve the overall longevity of the water itself to make it to where you don't have to change it, shock it, put chlorine, and do all those other things as routinely. Uh, and again, hydrogen peroxide on the outside of the skin is one of the fastest and best ways of starting to remove potential um, cancers, all the different types of growths that sit on the skin, anybody who's actually experiencing any kind of candida overgrowth, um, general psoriasis, things of that nature. Um, as long as it's not too bad in terms of the cracking, because you will get the bubbling reaction uh, that occurs whenever peroxide, but it's cleansing all of the bacterium that are causing any kind of issue on top of the skin surface. Um, so I bathe in one cup of, uh, of uh, hydrogen peroxide into a tub and hop in and again it's just very light bubbling very effervescent sort of sensation it does a fantastic job at cleaning I'll run with a salt scrub with some coconut oil afterwards in order to actually kind of just brush everything off and get all the dermis moving um, so tons of fun so who's a science person in here no you're a science person essential three There's a lot of different people out there. The biggest thing you want to just make sure is that they have a certification seal that says that they'll not do 30 they'll they will not be making their own 35% out of 100. Again, you don't want anyone else mixing your 35%. Um, you just want them giving you 35% hydroperoxide to where it's 35% hydroperoxide and water. That's that's all you want. Um, nothing else to it. So if they've certified that they have just pure hydrogen peroxide, 35% grade, then that's the big, they, they call it a food grade because butchers use it to clean all of their instruments as they're actually doing most of the food processing and handling. Um, so food grade is a way of kind of, but, um, and then the best website, I think they're still active, is called Guardians of Eden. Do you find them? 
and they'll let you buy it in everything from the um, little uh, eight ounce bottles all the way up to um, to fifty five gallons. So fantastic, fantastic compound to start using to start cleaning uh, routinely. Um, so. <laughs> You ever have a clogged drain? Yes. You ever use Drano? Yes. Why? Because <laughs> it works. Because she uses bleach. Because she uses bleach. I do. I love it. I do. You'll you'll eventually get past it. Once if you want a healthy thyroid, you won't use it anymore. Um, enzymes. Sometimes they don't get it right. So dry pack of baking soda in a drain all the reaction you need no crazy harmful chemicals this is baking soda just tossed into the drain again if you're good about it you'll start doing this just every two three weeks um, even the sink you only brush your teeth in front of still has junk and grime and you know material in there that just stays you know, in, a, in an interesting reaction. So you can just toss in, believe it or not, uh, one of the things I also do with this is about a half a cup of baking soda and it goes right into the toilet bowl. And then you just wait a couple seconds, it slowly kind of dissolves and as it's dissolving you throw it, splash it with the vinegar and the vinegar reaction will literally clean the entire bowl, no scrubbing, no anything, just make everything happy and wonderful. Back in the 70s. Uh-huh. Fireworks. Uh huh. Oh yeah. And it was baking soda and vinegar in this little chamber. Mm hmm. Suddenly released to make a bang. Bang. That's exactly right. So, um, it's you. Just water in there. This is vinegar. Oh, vinegar. So vinegar and baking soda is the easy do-it-yourself, no mess, no fuss drain up. So and again, toilet cleaner. Toilet cleaner. Um, yeah, well, no, it took, again, so it's very helpful, very, and it's funny because this compound here, um, it's used all the vinegar, it hasn't used all the baking soda, so this actually should, it's a miracle, it's a miracle, that bubbling heavy reaction will do a lot of great function for a long time. And that's where it's unique too. This will help a lot of men in the garage. It does help clean car parts. This is actually an oil lifter, but I wouldn't use it on any of your clothes. Um, so that's one of these neat things. I'm not a big happy-go-lucky vinegar smell person when I come to my house. I love fish and chips. I think that's fantastic, you know. But when it comes to walking in your house and literally having the whole thing smell like a, you know, tanning, uh, uh, old-style uh, leather tanning yard, no, not cool. Um, but it's good for emergencies. It's good for things like this. It can save you literally $685, which was the quote I got Christmas Eve when our garbage disposal took a complete dump for some reason at that moment. Um, and it took just a quarter cup of uh, baking soda uh, in a solution, poured in, and then the vinegar on top. It was not moving. I had to take the whole thing apart, and I put it back together. I thought it was clean, and there was just something in there that was gummed up. And it just needed a little bit of a good little bubble reaction in order to create a nice function. So um, this is fun. It's interesting, but it is one of those to where, like I say, don't let your kids eh, let your kids play with it. It is a lot of fun. Just don't let them put it in their mouth. Um, it's not. It's not good. So, Mike, if you go into the fridge right there, middle section. Uh, there's those two containers I was playing with before we started. Yeah. And if you grab the the uh, sample spoons, <laughs> eh, you know. Do we have sample spoons? Yeah. We have this vinegar and baking soda. So. Oral health is the thing that makes most people suck in more toxic compounds than really anything else that I could possibly imagine when it comes to, ex like, even again, a lot of people wear gloves and use bleach. You know, they at least understand that in they're using bleach, they try to wear gloves. Um, 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no vomiting. I have more towels. <laughs> I have more towels, which we will clean with. No. Or shampoo. You're in the splash zone. You're in. You are in the splash zone. So. Am I passing this around? Mm hmm. You know how you're supposed to keep that oil in your mouth going? Mm -hmm. I tried it. I almost died. What are we doing? Were they rinsing with it? Or? Mm hmm Rinsing. Okay. Gangs with it. Rinsing? And then you mm -hmm. want them to swallow it? Mm-mm. No. How much? Like a spoonful? Just a little bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Orange and cinnamon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As your instructor, um, whenever you're ready to spit, just raise your bucket. Um, I left my spittoon at home. I know. That's, what is that called? That's oil pulling. Yeah, oil pulling. Yeah. So, a very healthy practice. Definitely something to consider. The reason, the reason you do it for so long is the oil actually starts sucking up toxic compounds that normally your body doesn't release because it needs to be a fat-soluble system. So when you're 15, 16, I've got a few people saying that anything over 16 minutes and some of the actual toxins can be so concentrated in the oil that they'll start reabsorbing. Heard, yeah, it takes 15 minutes before it even really starts. Before, well, and that's where I've heard seven and a half. Can it's you, still you a thing. Out and do it again? Like Not truthfully, um, because what ends up actually happening is it's that particular oil in the contact with it for the duration. So once you stop and you no longer have it in there swishing, the material inside the blood will resend, re, re, uh, reduce back. The reason every day, and even if you are just starting like a practice of it, do it for 10 days, 30 days, see how you feel. People literally have healed IBS. People have gotten rid of Crohn's disease. People have taken their actual blood volumes and heavy metal toxicity and actually improved their overall counts from heavy metal poisoning. Um, so it's an amazing, amazing practice. Oh, I don't have to do it for 20 minutes. I've been doing it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is great. <laughs> 15, 15 to 16 minutes is kind of where we see the sort of like – that's where I get the most concurrence to where it at least has to be seven. At about 15 or 16, something something very different happens inside our bodies. Uh, 20 minutes is that way of saying trying to just. I mean, again, it's a practice that you get you better at, and you get used to it. You start doing it to where you're just walking out the you know bathroom after you've got everything else done. You throw the, the oil in there, and you're literally just downstairs going, "Okay, what was I thinking?" Some people can't swish and think, so the funny thing is they just end up walking in circles, and that's perfectly fine too. Yeah, Mm -hmm. You're, you start breathing through your, yeah, and uh, again, it's just one of those where, go ahead. Phenomenal. Yeah. So the funny thing, though, is, is never spit it in the sink. Otherwise, you're going to have to use the instant Drano because it will actually clog up the sink once it gets hard. 
Um, so when I melted these, you know, a few, yep. Oh yeah. Um, so you get the choices and the opportunities of, you know, seeing which your type of person you might be. What's this one? You'll see. It's a mystery. I, I tried this without any oil on it. It was gross. But this at least you can mm -hmm. clean it out. Mm -hmm. When you're like doubling your benefits, then you get the oil plus the mm -hmm. yeah. You're putting uh, drops in there. Mm -hmm. Drops of oil. Mm -hmm. My dad told me to do it first thing in the morning. Then take it out. I think that's the best time. Joe, so do you ever do a little bit of baking soda in your oil? In mm -hmm. your oil bowl? Mm -hmm. Like a pinch? And zeolite. Yeah. Everybody say the additives. You have to go easy on baking soda, though, so you don't get burned your gums. But it's good to do heat coconut oil. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. When you're done pulling, how do you get the oil in the coconut? When the coconut oil is part of the oil. So just like I did before this class started, um, when you are picking up your coconut oil, what I've started doing at my house is that I immediately take this in before I do anything, and I set it right on the actual top of the stove. So the next time I cook something, the oil goes liquid, and that's when I go, oh, yeah, that's right. I've got to put my oils in my, you know, uh, uh, oils in my oil. And so, like I say, anybody need the bucket, just, you know, put your hands up, let me know. And it's um, okay to ingest essential oils? It is okay to ingest essential oils. Certain ones for certain people and never because you just now found out about it. Um, you don't know what you're allergic to, and especially in the concentrations, you just don't know how your body's going to react. So always go back to that cautionary tale of putting something brand new to you right on the front of your lip in order to see if, hey, do I have a reaction to, um, you know, something like, uh, what's that really weird one, bergamot, you know, like, ah, you know, you've only ever seen it in candles, but, you know, the unique thing is you can use it on the inside as actually a way of decreasing blood pressure. Um, so it is, there is a benefit to it, bergamot. Mm -hmm. From tea, when, right? It flavor? is. Mm -hmm. It's it's unique that because flavor? yep, and it actually has a fantastic quality as being a very good relaxing material, which is probably why all the British people love tea time, um, because they've got a very high concentration of this in their their culture system. Um, so it's unique because this process is just one of those where a lot of people say all okay because it's all natural. That's not true. Um, you got to be protective of yourself. You got to look at how you know these materials kind of go into the body. Again, I try to start people off with things that are generally safe, generally recognized as not having any issues, but in concentration, they can be very damaging. Um, so the unique thing is, is that like um, a lot of people love using like oregano oil as a really good, um, as a really good uh, antimicrobial material, and um, the nice thing about uh, oregano is, is that it does work very effective through the skin. Um, everybody else spit. No more. Uh, um, oh, you're still going? <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Spit. <laughs> We're all friends here. No, I know. I did, that's not good. Just this. I got to tell you something about oregano. My husband, we've been here for a while now. Uh -huh. And uh, the gal that One drop uh -huh. in warm water with and lay as well. Uh huh. Garbage with it the next day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's fantastic. Yeah. Again, dilution. One drop. One drop. It would stay down with the water. Yeah. Fantastic. Down right down way to go. Yeah. Um, sad story be true. There was an individual who was experiencing um, Hep C uh, infection in the liver, um, hepatitis C. Oh. Um, so he heard that. Oregano actually kills viruses. So he thought, I'll start eating oregano. Um, he ended up consuming probably close to about 50 to 60 milliliters of oregano oil, and it killed his liver. 
So he went from got a bad functioning liver because I've got hep C to no liver, um, all because of the essential oil. So be very careful and cautious. <clears throat> Aromatherapists? Yes. Um, uh, and again, it's just. Well, and you got to trust your aromatherapist too, because you know I know aromatherapists who are like, oh yeah, I love clary sage. Clary sage will literally cause you to go blind. Um, so you just got to be very careful. Um, there's a process in this and understanding. Like I say, it's very unique. There's actually two types of mushroom essential oils that the typical time that you are alive to work with this particular essential oil is about six or seven years. Um, someone always has an accident and eventually kills themselves. Um, so, uh, it's a very interesting, what they call the black hooded monk mushroom. And so people, you know, use these really innate, very unique essential oils. And we only get to hear and use kind of a very simplistic round of them. Um, even if you, you know, are on the website and that's why start off with what you know. Um, same thing, like when it goes to anything is just, just start slow, be happy. Um, the oil pulling, again, is a fantastic way of just dropping your toothpaste tonight. No more toothpaste. You don't need it. It's not good. Colgate does not make a smile good. Everything about that company is destructive. Um, it kills your thyroid. It kills the inside of your teeth. It makes it to where you have to go to the dentist more. You have fluoridosis actually starting to occur. Um, again, it's one of those things where I'll be talking um, in March uh, for a group in L.A., the amount of fluoride in the public water system in one eight ounce bottle is the same concentration as the pea size that you put on top of your toothbrush. And somehow, if you swallow this, you're supposed to call the poison control agency to learn how to flush it out of the body. And yet, every day, out of a tap, no one says a word. Um, so there is a huge issue that's going on there. Um, that's where. Get it out of there. You don't need it. Um, there is natural fluoride in spring water and shilajit in most plants that your body will absorb enough. Um, it's very rarely a fluoride issue that's causing cavities. It's usually vitamin D, magnesium, silica, sulfur, all the other essential minerals getting back into the body. Um, so, but that's very fun, very interesting, very unique. Oil pulling by itself, just a big wad of oil, it's tough because your body doesn't get to focus on anything. But a few drops of essential oils, and for a um, large container like this, it's only 10 or 12 drops. Um, so when I did the cinnamon one, um, that was in uh, that quarter size there, three drops of cinnamon, uh, two drops of orange, and inside this one I think I did uh, four drops of peppermint for the half size. So you don't need a lot. I mean, and again, it was very refreshing. Um, but it's one of those where no more mouth washes, Listerine, horrible company, horrible concept. Soaking your teeth in alcohol is when you look at an alcoholic, that's what happens. <laughs> that's not a good dental practice. Um, and again, most of them are so stinking sugary with sucralose and things of that nature, and you're just coating your teeth with them. So no wonder why we end up having receding gum lines and issues like that versus really healthy oils, um, natural essential oils, um, brushing. You don't have to brush your teeth. Not that you don't have to brush them. You still have to physically get some stuff off there. But it will actually not allow for things to stick to your teeth as much. And the whitening process is amazing uh, because most of that is fat-soluble toxin. Um, so the body's holding on to compounds that stain to the pulp of the tooth um, under the enamel. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it helps. It reduces that. Because huh? you it, it can't hold on to the tooth surface anymore. It's slippery. You're getting oils all the time. Brush after. Drink a little warm water if you have to. Rinse with something like that after. If you, if you, um, baking soda is fantastic. I kind of do everything. I brush with iodine, with colloidal silver. I brush with baking soda, um, peroxide, um, everything, anything. All those are fantastic and again healthy because no toothpaste. No. No. Again, chloride, if you don't like bleach, 
fluoride is actually 10 times more toxic than chloride. Um, so if it's fluoride free, then sure, just, just check to see what they're mixing with the paste. And you can do it yourself. Again, this coconut oil base here is really nice, but you can add zeolite powder, clay mud, you can add sh uh, shilajit, you can add turmeric. Pretty awesome. Definitely whitens the teeth very effectively, reduces inflammation in the gums. If you're a person who gets a lot of mouth sores routinely, um, start with the oil pulling. Build up to start using uh, turmeric material in there. Um, magnesium salt uh, can be a part of that process as well too. Um, start nutrifying the inside of your mouth instead of pulling everything out. That's probably why you're getting an issue. Um, so iodine as a cleanser, yes, it still works. <laughs> Use it. Um, one of the biggest things for me when it comes to teaching my survival classes um, is actually that you can put um, 15 drops of pure iodine in half a gallon of water and let it sit for 12 hours and it will kill all microbes that are inside the water. If you're eating or drinking in an area, in an environment where you're actually um, uh, not so sure that you should be drinking the water, treat it with that. Um, what's that? Half a gallon, 15 drops, half a gallon. And you can do the same thing with hydrogen peroxide. You can put in an ounce of hydrogen peroxide in half a gallon and it'll actually clean and oxygenate the water to where you won't be getting any of the microbes and spores and, and things of that nature, the, the stuff that's infectious to the human body. Anybody in here ever run the hydrogen peroxide therapy? Did you ever do that? No? No? Did hydrogen peroxide therapy? That's, yeah, exactly. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So good. So some people have done it. So, like we say, the hydrogen peroxide at 35% will literally eat right through your skin. Um, don't put it on your body. Definitely don't drink it. <laughs> um, but, but you can start what's called hydrogen peroxide therapy, and I highly recommend you reading the um, peroxide miracle book um, first, just to kind of understand it. It's like 40 pages, so you can get it done in an hour, um, even read really slow. Um, but it's one of those where when it comes to blood oxygenation, when it comes to eating antioxidants, there is nothing stronger. Um, again, hydrate, mega hydrate talks about being stronger just because of the measurement value, but there's nothing more safe, natural, and stronger for oxygenating the blood than hydrogen peroxide. Um, the unique thing is, is you just need to reduce the concentration down. And the hydroperoxide therapy talks how to work your body through that process um, to where you can start. But when it comes to blood sepsis, when it comes to most of your infectious disease, if you are missing a thyroid um, or really, really low function thyroid, start on hydroperoxide therapy. It's fantastic for getting rid of anything that's in the blood that's not supposed to be there. Uh, and it can be a fantastic way of, of stabilizing the body. No, that, the, the, the therapy is to drink it, mm -hmm. but only the 35%, not the brown bottle. It's a whole process. So if you want to know any more information, talk to me. I'll set you up. Uh, otherwise, read the hydroperoxide or the peroxide uh, solution, I think is what it's called, maybe not the peroxide miracle. Um, but um, it is definitely one of those where it's a ton of fun. Um, like I say, I love sharing all of these little tips and tricks and ways of actually, is it still going? Yeah, it's still going. So it'll literally clean from, like if you put this in the, the furthest sink away from uh, your actual uh, outlet, your connection to the street, it'll clean from the beginning of your sink all the way through your plumbing system. No snaking required. Well, maybe required if you've got roots, but, um, but it'll get rid of any of the gunk that's in there. Um, so you can you can definitely see some good fun good fun things going on there. Um, and then do you not have to put water down it for a while? Or? Afterwards, yeah, you will rinse it. Yeah, just rinse it through. Oh, okay. But give it 15 minutes or so. Oh, okay. You so can see how... Uh -huh. Correct. So you were saying that um, don't put the coconut oil down the sink? Correct. But I wash my face to get rid of the makeup with coconut oil. Concentrations of coconut oil, hey, probably just throw a whole bunch of hot water down afterwards. Yeah. It will eventually clog things up. 
And then when they call the plumber and they go, hey, put their, their take a little spoon of it. Hey, is this coconut oil? Good job. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it is a nice way of, uh, yeah, coconut oil cleanser, coconut oil, everything when it comes to, you know, doing the natural systems. Um, like I say, I would love to take any interesting or very crazy kind of cool questions. Um, I know that tonight was a lot of information because, again, it's just sad we don't have our um, people who used to do all of this themselves um, around to tell us how to do it anymore. Um, so I had to research for three weeks in order to figure this out on, on a lot of these projects. Uh, Yes, yes. I mean, again, there's nothing better than what's called the the uh, the Bible of essential oils. Um, is actually the uh, guide to essential oils and aromatherapy. Um, Susan Carroll. Carroll. C A R R O L L, I believe. Guide to essential oils and aromatherapy. Young Living talks about the oils that Young Living has. Um, Susan Carroll is actually a wonderful teacher, um, been working for a long time with essential oils and being an aromatherapist um, and just taking it to a level to where anybody can start um, <clears throat> and just sort of learn some of the steps and some of the bits in the process. The big thing is to use them in ways that you already are using other compounds and realize that um, you know, you can come up with the best bits of these, you know, processes. Um, like I say, using cinnamon as a way, not just cleansing the teeth, but cinnamon does a fantastic job at actually um, getting rid of a lot of stomach ulcers because it will kill H. pylori. So when you start eating cinnamon, and especially concentrated cinnamon, be careful. You don't do this all at once, but if you're doing a couple drops in um, coffee, fantastic way of getting cinnamon without actually, you know, using it. Still doesn't take away the benefit of the actual nutrient and the, and the antioxidant compounds and the, and the material that comes away from eating cinnamon. But the essential oil will be more pervasive. It'll go through the body. So you can put a couple of tablespoons of coconut oil in your coffee, a couple of drops of uh, cinnamon oil, and actually have that be a part of your routine. If you're experiencing a lot of stomach distress, or if you've been told directly you have an ulcer and you have that issue, peppermint oil is the same way. Um, peppermint oil has a very long history of being a digestive aid and being a really good antiviral and antimicrobial material. So I wanted to overload people with the information that's there in front of you tonight because it's going to take a while for you to actually get through it. Um, and it's one of those where you can see how the process is of you going, well, I just thought orange oil was orange oil. Why would I think anything different? It does so many different things, and it really is just a beautiful compound for trying to go in and understanding how to um, to, to use it on the routine basis. I know people that have been using skin tag. Oh, yeah. With a drop of oregano oil. Oregano oil. Mm -hmm. One drop. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. Happens all the time. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, of course, I would love to open up um, to you just if there's any questions or anything that um, that you have directly for yourself. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. Okay, so uh, Mike's on uh, on the phone here, and of course online at the same time. Um, so he was able to uh, look, and the Guardian of Eden site says that the domain's up for sale. Um, so in two weeks, it might be something different or not even accessible. So take a look at it. He says there is a link that'll move you to where you can actually pick up the um, the material from another supplier. Um, so these things happen. Um, just just be very aware when you're buying. Um, I'll go take a look at it myself because I've bought from them for years now. Um, so I'll see what I can find out. And if there's any questions, just let me know. I'll try to help. Thank you very much. Which one? It's called Essential 3.
T-H-F or Googly? Yeah, they, it says uh, to relieve Googly heart arthritis symptoms, take one teaspoon honey with 200 milligrams yeah, of powder. Googly. Mm -hmm. okay. No, we don't do Googly by itself. It's in our um, a couple of our blends, oh, okay. um, but uh, the Trafala blend has a uh, uh, has a Googly in it. Um, it's just another interesting herb that goes along with uh, the absorption process uh, and, and a lot of herbs. Fun, exciting, interesting, good stuff. We sometimes do from the um, dragon herbs, um, but it's it's pretty pretty uh, pricey. Um, the idea is just to find a good honey supplier. Yes. Guy do essential oils and aromatherapy. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for joining this evening. Like I say, fantastic resource. Um, feel free to let me know if you have any more specific questions regarding your own use of essential oils, healthy home detox. Um, you know, it is one of those to where uh, if there's anything we can do, like I say, to just to clean up our environment first, then we don't have to work so hard to detox our bodies. So enjoy. Thank you so much. Have a great night.